What's going on everyone? This is Precog from headphones.com and today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the 7 Hz Dioco. This is a collab with Critical, the popular IM reviewer, and it is also incidentally the cheapest planner IM on the market currently at a MSRP of $100, I believe. So yes, yeah, very interesting, and this is also the same company that brought you the 7 Hz Timeless, which I wasn't super fond of, but I have to admit was a very solid option for $250. With that being said, let's take a closer look at what the 7 Hz Dioco is packing. So starting with the case, I have to say that I'm actually really impressed with what 7 Hz has pulled off here. It's a larger case, but the way they've configured it is very nice. You have individual slots for each of the headphones, the earphones, excuse me, and then you also have a mesh slot on the side. And I think the case itself has an aluminum frame, so it's very sturdy and it just inspires a sense of confidence in the hand. You probably won't be pocketing this case though, unless you walk around with maybe cargo shorts and very large ones of that. Before I forget, here are the included ear tips. Something pretty cool with this is that they have actually assigned each size of the ear tip a unique color, which I don't think I've seen done before. Um, they're all silicone. I don't think any foam ones are included. I just basically use the stock tips for my listening tests. Okay, and here we have the Dioco itself. Buyer beware, these are definitely on the larger side for IMs, although I will say that Comfort itself is pretty okay for me at least. I don't have any issues with them, but again, do be aware that the ergonomics of these IMs are not exactly conventional. Here they are in my ears. You can see that they do jut out a bit, and I would say that I have probably like average size ears, maybe a little bit above average in terms of the canal depth. Um, but yeah, just something to be aware of if you're looking for a, uh, maybe an IM to sleep on your side with or something a little bit more seamless in general. The included cable is nice enough. Mine came terminated in 3.5 millimeter. I'm not sure if there are other options, uh, but it's solid cable in general. I really don't have any issues with it. And then you have your MMCX connectors at the top. Okay, let's dive into my thoughts on the sound of the Dioco. And I think I'm gonna break this up as usual by first taking a look at the objective. So the measurements, the frequency response, and then after that, I'll share some thoughts on my uh, evaluation of the more subjective qualities like dynamics, resolution, and all that fun stuff. Okay, so now I do have to note that there was a little bit of a fiasco concerning the filters that were used in the Dioco. So some of the early units went out with the incorrect filter, which in turn, boosted the upper mid range and the uh, trouble regions to the point of which they were a little bit brighter than they should have been. This has been rectified. Linsel, the distributor, has sent out the filters and I've swapped them to the correct ones. And as is reflected on the measurements that I'm about to show, this does bring down the pina gain regions around 3K Hertz by about two or maybe three dB at most. But yeah, that's just something to be aware of and something that I have to disclose in the interest of transparency. So when we look at the frequency response of the Dioco, I don't think there is any question that it is a very well-tuned IM, at least on paper. Um, the bass response is shelved very nicely. It's almost all sub-bass. That is something that you guys know that Critical is very particular about. He loves a sub-bass. He likes to keep it controlled. He doesn't like having that sense of mid-bass. The consequence of this, of course, is that you lose some sense of body to the bass. Now, the mid-range is where things get a little bit more interesting because when you look at all the other current planar amps on the market, they tend to have a more V-shaped sound in general, more of a mild V-shaped sort of coloration to their mid-range. So what this means essentially is warmer lower mids, but then there's a little bit of a dip and then a more aggressive rise to the mid -range, the upper mid-range, excuse me, and the peanut compensation regions. So what I think I noticed most about the Dioco's mid-range, or rather don't notice, is that it doesn't have much coloration to it. Um, it's very close to hitting my perceived neutral. Now the sentiment doesn't apply as much to the treble regions where I think the Dioco's treble could use some work. Um, it's just a little bit uneven, albeit at the same time, very well extended as is characteristic of most of these planar IMs. Uh, in general, I would say that the timbre of most instruments in that region are just not quite correct. And that's not exclusive to the Dioco, by the way. That's something that I've noted with all of the current planar IMs on the market. So I don't necessarily think it's a glaring issue, at least within the grand scheme of things for tonality. Okay, so very well tuned I am. I think where maybe you'll notice some limitations, or at least I certainly notice some limitations are in terms of the Dioco's uh, subjective technical qualities. I think my initial impression of the Dioco once I swapped the filters was that there is at least to some degree, there seems to be some amount of dampening going on to achieve its very excellent frequency response on paper. And for whatever reason, it just does not sound like a super dynamic IM. I would say that it's maybe like 
slightly above average for that sense of macrodynamic contrast, for that sense of explosiveness when it comes to decibel gradations. And at the same time, it just doesn't slam very hard at all. I noted this characteristic, this weakness in the bass with the incorrect filter and the correct filter. In fact, the correct filter sort of exacerbates this quality because it brings up your perception of the bass um, by bringing down the uh, upper mid-range frequencies a little bit. So at least for me, the Dioko is not an IM that I would be purchasing for its bass response and its sense of slam. For a general sense of detail, I'll say that the Dioko to me sounds decent. Um, it was actually, it had actually better clarity with the incorrect filters. Like it had sharper attack transients and stuff just sounded more alive in general. Um, with the correct filters, I would say that you're looking at around maybe a solid B grade or maybe even a B plus in terms of technicalities. And if we want to go down the avenue of comparisons to stuff like the uh, the Timeless and the S12, which I also have on hand, I'll say that those IMs, to me at least, they saw more detailed than the Dioko does. For imaging and layering performance, again, I would say that the Dioko, for me at least, falls within the realm of average. It is very much reminiscent of the uh, Timeless and the S12, maybe just not as congested as the Timeless in particular. I would say that the sense of openness to the Dioko relative to the Timeless is mostly a consequence of the Dioko being a less warm sound in general. Okay, so what's the bottom line here? I think that the Dioko is good for $100, but at the same time, I wouldn't let your expectations or preconceptions of what the other planar IMs have achieved in the $240, $200 space lead you astray of what the Dioko is capable of. In essence, it's not necessarily as good, at least to me, as the S12 and the Timeless for its sense of technical performance. But at the same time, you are, for some listeners, I think definitely getting a more palatable mid-range tonality, as well as just maybe tonality in general if some people found that the bass on the S12 and the Timeless was a little bit too muddy for them. I wouldn't expect the Dioko to be competing against them necessarily. For $100, I think it does a great job. I think that if you wanna support Critical and if you want your first taste of planar tuning, then it is a good option. Okay, and I think that's gonna do it for this review. Thanks so much for watching. And if you guys wanna see more audio reviews, see more information on this sort of content, that I would encourage you to check out our website, headphones.com, in the review section. That's where you'll find our written reviews, which usually come out a little bit ahead of time of the video ones. And yeah, see you guys in the next one.